So, this is the newest addition to my phone collection. It is an NTT Japanese public payphone. And, as I said, it is a payphone from Japan. Um, this is both an overview of this and a tutorial of how to use it. Because you find these a lot on eBay, or if you search proxy shipping services a lot, like I do, um, you can find these. And there's not really any clear instruction on how to use these. Unfortunately, it is not plug-and-play. So we'll get into that. Um, first thing first, though, you'll need, obviously, either an 100 yen coin or a 10 yen coin. I have a handful of these. Um, the rates for calls in terms of how long you can call, that is logic that is basically uh, right, uh, written in here, and I believe right protected. You can't reprogram these. Um, there's no modem or anything like that. Um, so in here, it's asking for either 10 or 100 yen, and this sticker informs you that... Uh, there is no change for 100 yen. So if you put in a 100 yen coin and you only make a call that's worth 30 yen, uh, you are not getting any change back. And yes, I do speak some Japanese. I studied it in university, so that's, that's how I know a little bit of what this says. Um, looking down at the button panel, there is a volume button. This uh, a clear button. And the way this works is if you have the phone off hook and you are dialing something, you can hit clear to just, uh, see if we can see that there, to clear the display. Um, so say there's numbers on there, we can hit clear, clears the display. There's also the reset button, which will reset the whole system as though you had just hung up and picked back up. Uh, there is a hold button. This plays music both for the caller and out of the speaker. And in that, we have a speakerphone button that plays. Um, on the side is our coin box. And under that coin box are some switches that determine how the ringer sounds, whether or not we can have incoming calls, and uh, the ringer volume. Uh, this is just telling you how to dial your SOS calls and letting you know, I think, that the SOS calls are free. So SOS calls are anything from 110 to 119. You can hit the SOS button and pick up the phone. Um, that's what you're supposed to do, but I find you don't actually have to do that. So you can see if I pick up the phone and dial one of these SOS numbers, the phone will allow me to make that call. Now that's not going to go anywhere. Um, if I were to try and place anything else, the phone shuts off because I have not put a coin in. So I can dial... Um, emergency numbers and Japanese toll-free numbers, which start with 0, 1, 2, 0, and it'll let me do that. Anything else, it'll shut the phone off. Now, by default, the microphone on the handset is disabled until the call that you make answers, or you dial one of those SOS or toll-free numbers. Then it'll cut on. Um, down below, this is just telling you uh, there's various information about the charges for directory assistance. Uh, I believe something about Tokyo's area code changing. I don't remember. It's been a little bit since I've looked at it. Um, and, yeah, so let's go over now that you've kind of seen the phone. How do you actually use these um, in America if you want them? What do you have to do? So, like I said, the first thing you need is a coin of some kind. I have a couple of hundred yen coins. I'm just going to be using one for this demonstration. The phone is saying that it is ready to be used. That is what that little text is letting you know. If I try to put in a coin, it is just going to slide right through to our coin return. That is because you are supposed to pick up the phone first. Now, if, like I said, if I dial anything, nothing happens, and the phone shuts off. And now it's completely unresponsive. So what I'm supposed to do is lift the phone, it is telling you to insert a coin on the top line, and then dial, please. Put in a coin. Now it's asking you to dial. I will call my voicemail. And upon the voicemail answering, we will see that it'll drop the coin in the box because the call has answered. Now the coin's in the box. The mic has enabled, and we can make all the phone calls we want. Now when I hang up... Nothing happens. 
if I were to dial something and it didn't go through, the coin would shoot right back out the coin return. We'd hear the coin relay operate. As a matter of fact, let's listen to that now, just because. I'll open up our coin box here, which does not have the lock on it. And we'll get some coins out. And you can see, it's asking us to put a coin in. If I put one in and don't do anything, the coin relay will shoot it back out. So, there are a couple of things that you need to know before you can actually make this work. Number one, these are expecting to be plugged into something with reverse polarity. There's a few ways you can achieve this. If you plug it into a PBX back there that is reverse polarity by default, everything will be great. This thing will work just fine. Um, most people don't have that, and there's a, a couple of other reasons why you can't actually use that. We'll get into that in a second. What I did was built an adapter. Now this is just two phone lines on either end, and on the inside I have reversed the red and green wires so that the polarity gets reversed from whatever gets connected in here. We plug the phone in to this end, and then up there goes all the way up to my ATA. So that's the first thing. Without a reverse polarity phone line, this will not work. Number two, you cannot make any calls on this unless you have a system that reverses the polarity upon a call answering. Now, most ATAs will allow you to do this, and that is why the coin dropped into the box when I made my voicemail call. This is a setting you can change, so my ATA reverses the polarity when a call answers. That is this thing's signal to drop the coin into the box, and allow the mic to operate. Without that, the mic will never turn on, the coin will never drop into the box, and you will never be able to make a call. So, you need a reverse polarity phone line. You can make an adapter to do that. And you need a system that reverses the polarity when the called party answers. My cats are having a little tussle in the background. Ignore them. Um, there is one issue with that, though. The issue is, if you plan on making incoming calls, they won't work, and that is because when you pick up the phone, my Grandstream ATA, for example, will also reverse the polarity when an incoming call answers. So if I make an incoming call to this phone and I answer, polarity gets reversed, and this thing treats it as a sign to hang up. That is for incoming calls only. If there were a system that allowed polarity reversal for outgoing calls only and not allow it for incoming calls, then this thing would function perfectly. And I would think that that is probably what the landline slash telephone network of Japan does. And that's probably what this thing is expecting. If I turn off the polarity reversal, I can no longer make outgoing calls, but I can receive all the incoming calls that I want. Well, I hope this was helpful in understanding how to use these things for any prospective buyers who might purchase one of these on eBay.